Hello Wastelanders, Wanderer here and welcome back to Fallout 4 Horizon. This is the Wasteland Survival Guide issue number two. Now if you've not watched the first episode, make sure you go and do that because we're going to be going over how to set up your first base and to do that we're going to be using materials that you found in the first episode, specifically some stuff you probably found in the root cellar of Sanctuary, etc. Obviously we are not at Sanctuary, we are at Spectacle Island but I did not want to be bothered by all of my settlers constantly pestering me and stuff over at Sanctuary, so yeah, we're over here because there's no one here. So, uh, pretend you're at Sanctuary right now, and you've already got your basic structure built with all of your basic base workbenches, all the stuff that comes with Sanctuary. We're going to be going over what you're going to need to build and kind of what they're used for, not in depth, that'll be a separate video probably for each one because I honestly would be talking for several hours if I went over everything. But uh, kind of what you need to start out in Horizon. So first off we're going to be going to the crafting menu of the workshop here and you're going to want to build a tech lab. You should have all the materials for this. Um, you sh the toolkits you need, you should get those from that root cellar and sanctuary. Again, if you've not watched the previous video, you might not have the stuff that you need for that. So the tech lab is used to craft things for your other workbenches. I'm not going to go over everything here, but there's a lot of stuff you're going to be using for other workbenches. Things like your various types of kits, your military kits, tool kits, supply kits, etc. Um, things like your transmitter chips that increase your carry weight, your tools and parts that are used for all kinds of various things, um, equipment, etc. So this is used to kind of make materials that you'll be using in your other workbenches. Again, I could spend probably half an hour talking about all the stuff you can craft in here, but that's not the purpose of this video. You'll discover a lot of that on your own. Second thing we're going to craft from the crafting section is the weapons lab. Now this is different from the weapons workbench, it's not the same thing. Weapons lab is used primarily to craft ammunition and disassemble ammunition. You can also craft a couple of Horizon custom weapons here. Things like the combat plasma rifle, the insanely overpowered plasma rifle I've been using throughout most of my playthrough on this character and I'll be using it in my next playthrough as well. Uh, the handmade gauze rifle, also an, an incredibly overpowered weapon. Well, not, maybe not overpowered, but it's very, very good. I shouldn't say overpower, they're just very good. But yeah, you can craft weapons here. Um, you can create conversion kits so you can convert your weapons to automatic or semi-automatic. Lots of stuff you can do here as far as crafting energy and ballistic ammo, um, explosives, etc. The next thing we're going to talk about is actually not in this section. Actually, hold on, I take it back. Let's talk about the market trading terminal. Now, you're not going to make one of these right away. Do not, do not, do not make one of these right away because it requires a cargo bot and if you're following Horizon you're only going to have one spare cargo bot in the beginning and you're going to want to spend that cargo bot on your resource station so don't make this right away but I will make one to show you kind of what it does because you will want to make one as soon as you have the materials to spare to make a second cargo bot. So this is used to do trading and it's really handy because a lot of times you won't have maybe the necessary skills to make a certain thing like a poison antidote for example but if you have a bit of skill in trading, you can trade for it. Now, the things that these guys offer change every cycle change. So every cycle or so, um, every 16 or 24 hours, depending on what your time scale is, uh, it will change and you'll have different stuff offered up at that time. So, for example, you can trade in some of your valuables for pre-war money, which can then be used to purchase literature packages, which give you magazines. Um, it's a very good way of getting magazines. I, I buy sometimes 20 or 30 magazines all at once. Uh, you can buy bundles of various types of vegetables and fruits. You can also get your companion weapons here. Lots and lots of stuff. Um, watch out for, oh, prototype part box. Those are also useful. You can get alloys from those, very high level alloys, including, of course, the grade 9 titanium and steel and aluminum, stuff like that. So yeah. Check this out when you have time, once you've got some stuff to trade. It's worth trading a lot of the time for the stuff that's on there. Oh, you know what? There's one more thing we can talk about too. You're not going to be able to make this right away, the ZX1 Experimentation Lab. You won't be able to make this immediately, but you will want to make this as soon as you can. I have an entire video talking about how to use this, but the basic premise is that you find weapons, you use this interface to reverse engineer those weapons, and you can then 
craft those weapons. You'll also have this new weapon crafting skill that you earn either by deconstructing weapons or by reverse engineering weapons or by crafting them or by making special items called weapon tinker kits. Those also give you quite a bit of regular experience as well. You craft those uh, weapon tinker kits, I believe, over in the tech lab here. I think that's all in here for now in the crafting section. Now we're going to be going over to the architect section and to utilities and there are a couple things we want to craft here. So first off, this caravan travel hub, it doesn't cost a whole lot to make. This is used in, con in conjunction with supply kits uh, and if, of course if you have three settlers to fast travel somewhere else. Now I can't enter in here right now because I don't think I have the required settlers here. No, I don't. Um, you know what? Let me get through real quick just so I can show you how it works. That settler recruitment radio I just used there, uh, those are rewards from doing settler missions and I think you just randomly get them sometimes, but it allows you to instantly call in a settler guaranteed. They're kind of rare, so I tend to try to keep them on me for when I'm setting up a new settlement so I can call one in right away and then use that settler on a supply line. Of course, you could just make a um, resource station as well, which we're going to be going over in a second. So now we should have the required settlers to use this. You need three, of course. So to use this, you use up supplies. And to add supplies, you go into the Enter Supply menu, and you need to either add supply kits. Each supply kit gives you 30. Uh, 30 is the total supplies. Or you can pay caps. The far better option, because 400 caps is a lot, the far better option is to make supply kits over in the tech lab. Or you just get those if you have an excess of food and water overall from all your settlements. So more about that in a separate video. But basically you use supply kits in here, you add them. If you have supply kits on you, you'll have an option to add supply kit and it'll add plus 30 supplies up here. And when you want to fast travel somewhere, you select where you want to go here. And depending on the distance, it will use anywhere from one to 10 supplies. So this is the Horizon fast travel system it's fantastic. It really, really is. It makes the game a lot easier. And I know some people are really against fast travel, but I really like this system. It's limiting enough that you still make use of things like vertebrate grenades and mainly walking places. You still run across new locations and stuff and find cool stuff. But if you really know that you want to get somewhere and you don't want to spend 10 minutes or so walking across the Commonwealth, that's a really nice thing to have there. So uh, next up, let's hop back in here to the workstation. So next up, let's do the, oh, you can also make a caravan travel radio. Same thing as this, uh, just uses different materials. Basic circuitry is kind of a pain to come across, but uh, I think that's gonna change in the next version if it hasn't already changed of Horizon. Uh, next thing we're gonna talk about is the mailbox. So let me plop one of those down there. Again, very easy to make. You can make one of those right away. This is used to check mail, and this does several functions. Um, when you have a companion, they will send you mail occasionally, and your mailbox can store up to three mails from them. So whenever you have a mail um, unread, you'll have a read mail thing here you can check. And then once you read them, you can open your mailbox container and grab any items. In this case, I have some pre-worm money in here. That's because if you go to the open outgoing mailbox container, I told you before that you can trade for sealed literature packages, which give you a random magazine from the, uh, the terminal over there, the market terminal. Well, once you're done reading your magazine, once you've gotten the skill from it, you can just dump your magazines into the outgoing mailbox here. But yeah, dump these in here, and I believe you get five pre-war money per. Now, of course, it costs 100 pre-war money, but at least you can kind of recycle these and get something out of it. You know, at least from all these that you've read, uh, you can get a couple more next time whenever you come back to your mailbox. I think it takes like one cycle, which is a full in-game day with the regular time scale or 16 hours with the half time scale uh, to get these back. So to get them back as pre-war money that is. So very, very helpful. Um, there's also documentation here. You can check out all the documentation in game for all the various things. This is very, very helpful if you are curious about how the Horizon skills work. There literally is a how skills work thing here that gives you kind of a quick overview. I'll be doing a more in-depth video on all this stuff a bit later. 
but uh, for now, that should help you out with kind of getting your bearings in Horizon. So next thing we're going to talk about is going to be the resource station. Now, this is one of the most important things you'll be making, okay? In fact, let me just put this over here because we're not going to have it right away. You're not going to be able to use it. So the resource station is used to monitor uh, your resources in Horizon. So if you go to this and then go to resource management, you open up kind of a new sub menu that has a whole bunch of other stuff on it here. It'll tell you all of your resource information about Horizon, how much water you have, water production, power production, income. This is all per cycle. And it tells you down here what your next production cycle, how soon it will be. So I believe this means I have 14 hours left on my current production cycle. So in 14 hours, 14 in-game hours, I will get all this stuff again, okay? Unless something changes here. It all goes based off of rating, and I'll go over that more in a separate video. So in this example, I am gaining uh, 16 water, 100 power, um, 1150 income. That is uh, vendor credits, which you can transfer to caps or use as vendor credits for trading on the market terminal. Here, these three things are what we use up. You can also add these things. So if you need to add maintenance kits that will allow you to produce water, uh, adding fuel allows you to produce these resources right here. And adding fertilizer is used for your crops to double their production. So you can add all those things here. If you go to the production destination menu, that will set where your production, where all those things are listed up there, where it actually goes. Now I recommend setting it to production storage because that way when you come back to base, you can just open up your production storage, take all, sort through it, drop off what you want to in your workshop and be done. That way you're not uh, fiddling with stuff. You can see exactly what you're getting. You'll know right away if you're not getting something that you should be, if there's a problem somewhere, maybe it's a bug, maybe you just forgot to put your maintenance kits in there or something so you're not getting water. I like to see exactly what I'm getting every day and it's fine if it builds up, you can let it build up in there, but uh, I like to see what I'm getting. So again, you'd to get to there, you'd go out of here, you go back to here, and you want to open up your production storage. So you can see here, this is everything that I have earned. Because I get 200 power units per day, I can tell this is two days worth of stuff. And um, in this case, I am sending everything back on my cargo bot as well, back to here. And I'll talk about cargo bots more in a different video. I know I keep saying that, but it's really too much to go over in one video. Uh, but basically, cargo bots are a way for you to transfer stuff in the field back to your base so you can keep adventuring and you don't have to come back to drop off stuff every time your inventory fills up. Even having this much carry weight, which you will get if you get all of the cargo bots, the personal cargo bots, even having all of that, you will have to come back quite often if you have to uh, scrap all this stuff. So it's a nice way of doing it. It all comes back to here. I just grab all of it, scrap what I want to, dump all my, my junk into my, my workstations here, and then we're good to go. You also have personal storage here, which is very handy. Uh, so you can open up your personal storage, and if you want to keep stuff, maybe weapons that you won't use right away, but are maybe unique, and so you want to keep them for displaying later in your settlements or something, you can do that here. Or if you just have spare stuff you want to you want to put here because maybe you want to use it later, maybe it's hard to come by and you don't want to get rid of it because there's only one version of it in the game, stuff like that. This is a good place for it. There's one more thing I want to go over here, which is the cargo bot supply line. So if you go into the main page here and scroll down, you'll see manage cargo bot supply line. And you can actually use this just like you would a regular settler supply line, like a provisioner. And it saves you a settler. And it's also handy because you don't have to have any kind of leadership skill for it. So you can just hit this and decide where you would like your supply line to go and it'll go there. The only bad part is you have to craft one of these at every single settlement, and that means you have to make a new cargo bot for every settlement, and making cargo bots is a little bit resource intensive, at least in the early game. Anyway, there's a lot more with that resource station. I'm not gonna go over everything. There's just so much to go over with it. That's like a video by itself. Let's go back into utilities here under the architect menu and talk about some other stuff. The command table, you wanna make these one, one of these right away. It's easy to make, doesn't require much. 
and this is where you will assign your settlers missions. So you can also see your local statistics and stuff, and you can see your total statistics. If you go to total statistics, you can see all of your various population, your happiness, how many settlements you have, all their stats combined, etc. The command table is also where you will deploy your settlers on missions. So if you go to the architect menu here and go back one and go over to job stations, you can set up these job stations that do various things like military stuff, uh, repair, technician, engineer, craftsman, etc. So the idea is you set these up, you assign a settler to one, they're a one-to-one -one thing, and then you go to the, com the command table here, and eventually it will come up. There we go. Go to command missions, and you can then send those settlers out on missions. So for example, if you have six militia, you can deploy those six militia on a mission, say an assault mission, and they will go and do an assault mission and if they're successful, they'll bring back some items and their militia level will increase. You can actually go back here and view your mission statistics over here, and it will tell you what your settler skills are. The higher their skills become, the higher their chances are of succeeding, so the longer, the more you do this, the more rewarding it gets. And let me tell you, when they come back and drop things off, they can drop off some very valuable things. Things like uh, rifle weapon parts, uh, alloys, prototype parts from uh, legendaries that you can use for crafting, chems, bandages, books, experience items that get, just give you, you just use them and they just give you experience. Um, lots of good stuff. This is very worth doing. The only thing that kind of sucks is that you are limited in how many things you can deploy. So as far as I know, there is a hard limit on 25 total tasks that can be deployed at one time. So you cannot have any more than that deployed at one time. And you are limited on how many of each you can deploy uh, over here. So for example, I have 19 total militia spread across all my settlements but I can only deploy 17 total. What this effectively means is that I end up having more of these people than I can really ever deploy at once because the hard cap on it is 25 because you cannot have more than 25 tasks going at once. So now keep in mind, for example, when I deploy six militia, that will use six of these guys and that is one task. So. Deploying these big ones whenever possible is what you want to do. Unfortunately, the hunters and the entertainers and the craftsmen, those are single job guys. They they work alone, and so each of those counts as one of those 25 tasks, and that will eat into your maximum amount of tasks you can do very quickly. I hope that that 25 is lifted at some point. Um, I guess it's because he's afraid, Zonal is afraid of us getting too much, which rightly so. Whenever you guys all come back, you can see right here I have three tasks to complete, but uh, if I wait another day or two, I should complete all of them. Whenever they all come back, you can read all completed tasks. You can actually read them to see uh, what happened. Or what I do is just complete all tasks, skipping all reports and it shows you a summary of everything that happened. So three succeeded, zero failed, we gained 26 skill. You can then go and open mission container. So this is just from three. This is just from three of my missions. This is all the stuff I got. Some energy cells, some free smokeless powder, quite a lot of actually free, uh, free smokeless powder, 600 smokeless powder, that's pretty impressive. Bunch of military kits, um, seller recruitment radios, I, I told you about those. How useful they are got those from this a bunch of uh, various ammo and a bunch of prototype stuff let me see if i got anything good here from these aluminum alloy uh grade nine on that very good and some steel alloy grade eight and that's about it and of course i've got some other stuff here too so good stuff really really good stuff guys and this is only from a couple of them this is only from three tasks that were completed although those were it looks like the military ones so whenever they're done, you go ahead and hit deploy settlers on mission. Now, the problem is I don't have enough kits to do this stuff right now. Remember we talked about making supply kits, military kits, tool kits, etc. over at the tech lab, which we just crafted? Well, this is where you're going to use them or one of the places you're going to use them. 
Uh, you use them in a couple different places, but this is the main one. You're going to want to always have a couple of those on hand so you can deploy missions here. So I'll have to go. I have a whole bunch crafted already, but they're at the castle. You have to have them in your inventory to deploy the settlers. You can't uh, just have them in your, your settlement, in your workshop. They have to physically be on you to deploy them. So that is the command table in a nutshell. You can also craft a training disc. This is used for picking a specialization. Now you don't need one of these right away, but it doesn't really cost anything to craft. So, hey, you might as well, right? So from here, you can pick up a specialization. Now specializations require three ranks or more of specific perks. So for example, to get the cyborg, which is an energy weapons based specialization, you have to get rank three of future soldier over here in the agility perk tree. The benefit of picking a specialization is that you do between 20 and 25% more damage with that type of weapon. Um, it's quite good. It does require you to be level 15 though. Um, and you can pick multiple specializations. There are actually two available. And if you want to respec mid game, you can remove your specialization and pick a new one. However, it is quite pricey. Okay, uh, next thing I wanna talk about is the medical service wheelchair here. Now, people get this confused because they think that this actually gives you the option to receive medical service. That's not how this works. This still requires you to have a doctor vendor in that settlement, okay? It does not work unless you have a vendor that is set up as a doctor. Now, when you do, it's handy because then you don't have to go and find that doctor. You don't have to go looking around for him to get medical service. Instead, you can just use this. But as you can see here, there are currently no doctors in this settlement, so I can't use it. Next, let's talk about the shredder. So the shredder here is useful before you get the personal toolkit, which is used to field scrap stuff. So the way the shredder works, I need some power for this. Let me go ahead and craft a generator real quick here. But the way that the shredder works is that you can dump scrap or armor into it and it will shred it. So let me go ahead and grab some stuff here. All right, so I've grabbed everything from my settlement here, which I don't even know why there's that much stuff here. But anyway, I've grabbed it all and we can go ahead and turn those, the scrap, the actual junk into components. Okay, so you turn the junk into components, the base components. And that's useful whenever you're trying to, for example, add fertilizer to your compost bin or stuff like that, adding, adding bones, and your bones are categorized in like 50 different types of bones, like it might say skull or tibia or skull face plate broken thing, I don't know. There are all these different names for things. This turns everything into its base components, which is really handy. So go ahead and open it up here, access junk scrapping tools, scrap all junk in your inventory. You don't have to dump it in or anything, you just hit scrap all junk in your inventory, it will take care of it for you. Just wait about 15 seconds or so. Anytime now, there we go. It has salvaged 7,384 components. Excellent. So now I can just take that, walk over back over to my base here slowly because I'm over encumbered and just dump it all in. And look at that. We've got everything broken down into its base components, all nice and neat. You can see exactly what you have. So if I want to grab some fertilizer here and then dump that in my compost bin, I can. If I want to grab some bones, do the same thing. Very easy to do. I can see exactly how much of each of my alloys I have right away. Very, very handy. The other nice thing you can do over here is you can break down equipment. It's actually a bit faster to do it this way than doing it with a workbench. And it's a bit, a little bit safer too because you don't jump around as much. When you're when you're scrapping stuff in Horizon in a workbench, it has a tendency to jump back and forth between your, your stuff that you don't want to scrap and here. So in this case, well, I've got one thing that's named incorrect. Let me rename this real quick. I'll show you another trick here. While we're here, let me show you a little trick. When you have stuff that you use often that you are always have equipped and you don't ever want to scrap it, you can rename it. So for example, if I go here and rename this, I'm gonna get rid of the tag that's added and leave a space in front. Okay, leave a space in front and it will put it to the top here. That will make it so that you can very easily send everything else on your cargo bot or if you're scrapping it, you can scrap it very easily using your personal toolkit or this thing. Let me show you here real quick. I'm gonna to go to equipment scrapping. 
I'm actually going to scrap all this stuff, and it's a lot easier if I have it set up like that. I don't think you can actually scrap this stuff, but I'll try. Just go ahead and just spam your Enter and your E button at the same time. Just spam it as fast as you can possibly spam it. Some things won't be able to be scrapped in here, but most things will. Just be careful that you don't do your actual armor here. Now, I did it really fast, so it's going to take a while to go through this, but it still is considerably faster than doing it on the armor workbench. And uh, the only bad part is that when you do it like this, you don't get anything extra. So, for example, if this was... I don't have anything in here that's heavily modded, but if it was heavily modded and I scrapped it on the armor workbench, I might get a bit more back, which is kind of nice, a bit of extra materials back. Uh, you don't get that here. You get the base items, so just like leather, cloth, maybe some bone and metal, stuff like that. That's all you get. So for whatever reason, I think Nugle World stuff does not scrap properly, and uh, maybe some of the Far Harbor stuff does not scrap properly either. But that's very handy. We can just go back over here then and dump it all off. Okay, there are two more things I want to talk about here, and they're just kind of convenience things that you're going to get later on. So the crazy thing is you end up with, you basically need a really big building just to house all of your crafting stuff here, right? It's kind of a pain and uh, late game. Well, it's just a lot more convenient if you don't have it all there. Thankfully, Horizon has condensed everything, including all of this stuff. I think everything except for these two. Actually, no, I take it back. Everything except for the Caravan Travel Hub and the ZX-1 Experimentation Station can be condensed down into two workstations. And those are the Equipment Workstation, which will have all of your basic stuff, your weapons, armor, um, an experimentation lab, your tech lab, your weapons lab. It's all right here. Very nice and convenient for you. It also has a... Um, oh, it does contain the experimentation... Okay, never mind. So you don't need the experimentation lab either. So I guess all you need are these two, the command station, command workstation, and the equipment workstation, and your caravan travel hub, and that's all you need. Unless maybe there's a caravan travel hub. But yeah, so you make these two, and it has everything you could possibly need. So you've got your cooking, your chemistry, your command table is here, your training desk is here, um, your market trading terminal is over here as well, your mailbox, it's all over here, and then you've got all of your equipment stuff over here, including your ZX-1 experimentation lab. So all that space is condensed down to two of these things, very convenient, very compact. Of course you have your caravan travel hub separately, but if you wanted to, you could just make a caravan travel radio which is the same thing, just a lot smaller. So, that was a lot to go over. Like I said, I didn't go over them all extensively because it's just too much to talk about. Um, I'll go over more of this stuff more extensively, how all this stuff works together in future videos, but I hope this is at least enough to get you started and you can kind of explore these workbenches on your own and sort of figure out the workflow that's required to make Horizon really work for you. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time.